What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? I love seeing all these comments. It was good stuff. <laughs> all right, we'll give people a couple more minutes here to get rocking and rolling. How you guys doing? I'm um, just checking, do, doing some sound checks. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> we are in business. Cool. All right, y'all. So, uh, yeah, let's see where people are from. This is always fun. Uh, we got people from, I saw some people from Calgary. We got Canada in the house. We got Texas in the house. Yeah. Uh, Iowa, go Hawkeyes. My entire family lives there. We got Montana. We got Newfoundland, UK, Chicago, Rhode Island, Arizona. <laughs> go Oilers. Whee! The Carolinas, where the South is represented, with Tennessee. We got the we got the Northeast, Philadelphia, Germany. I, I saw I saw someone from Israel just popped in. That's pretty cool. Uh, yes. Hello from Israel. <laughs> Super cool. This is why I love this stuff. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Poland, Romania, Portugal. I'm getting goosebumps, y'all. This is fun. So, awesome. <clears throat> well, hey, let's uh, let's get started. It's about 11.01. Um, oh, I got to adjust my chair here. It's about 11.01, 11.02. People kind of pop on. Uh, I just kind of want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Trevor Wicken. I'm the founder and creator of the MS Gym. Hopefully you've been following us for a while. You've been watching on YouTube. You've been doing all the fun things. So you kind of know a little bit about me, you know a little bit what I'm about. But uh, I'm just fired up to be here and I'm fired up to be with you guys. I have such a passion for helping people with chronic illnesses, helping people with neurologic, neurodegenerative conditions all across the world to really start to investigate, explore, and fall in love with the power of movement medicine um because medicine is movement and that's what this entire workshop is about so let's get this party started and uh and pull up these slides so what we're going to be talking about today is the concept of movement medicine all right movement medicine so when we talk about movement medicine like it's part of your treatment plan and the, the brain thrives on movement your brain is activated by movement, it is fueled by movement. But what I want to do today, my objective is really to change and can kind of enhance your paradigm and your understanding of what movement actually is. Because movement is not just fitness. Movement is not just moving joints and muscles. Movement happens throughout your entire body. Movement happens in parts of your brain that you don't even know about. Movement happens inside your organs. Movement it happens inside your eyes, your ears, your, your, your lungs, all this kind of stuff. So when your body moves, your brain is activated and fueled. When your body eats well, it is activated and fueled. And when your body breathes, it is activated and fueled. And that's the entire point is that in this process of healing, we really want to get your brain well nourished and well fueled because if it's well nourished and well fueled, it will have the nutrients and the energy that is going to be required in order for neuroplastic change to happen, which is a new way of your brain functioning, organizing, communicating, thinking, and existing. All right. So when we look at this slide, if you look at the three, uh, you look at the three circles down here, you got C, move, and balance. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So, boom. So I want you to pay attention to this fact. All right. This is a fact. So when we look at most of the fitness programs and most of the therapy programs around the world, um, research validates and research shows that only that 90% that of fitness programs, 90% of most therapy programs are only going to improve one third of your central nervous system. So they're only 33% effective. All right. So I'm going to get to these, uh, these satellites. You see this picture of satellites. This is what GPS is. 
So when you have a global positioning system, you have three satellites and there's three different signals coming in. And if you look at that red X down there, that's going to be your, your positioning. There is a triangulation of all three of those satellites. They all send a signal to you. You send a signal back to them. They communicate with each other. So then that gives you that global positioning location. Now with a neurode neurodegenerative condition, when you have a symptom, we are wanting to improve the area that the symptoms are affecting. Therefore, we need to get all three of the satellite systems inside of your brain to be able to locate the, the, the problem area, if you will, the affected area, figure out what to do with it, communicate that, that plan back to your brain and have your brain actually do something with it. All right, so we'll get back to this slide in just a sec. So when I talk about that most therapy programs and most fitness programs only, fo only focus on or only actually activate or improve one third of the central nervous system, what does that mean? Why is that important, okay? Well, your central nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord, they're one organ. And then from your brain and your spinal cord, you have all these peripheral nerves that spread out over your entire body and that is what generates movement. You actually have nerves that go from your brainstem to all your internal organs, to all your blood vessels, to your heart, to your lungs, to your liver, to your digestion. And if those nerves are not firing because there's a disruption in your brain, in your cerebellum, in your brainstem, in your spinal cord, then that leads to the problems that y'all are experiencing with neurodegeneration, all right? Um, so every, so what I, I put this slide up because if you've seen the movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, like I love this guy, this guy. Um, he, everything like this is, uh, this is, this is the dad. This is the Greek dad who has so much nationalistic pride in Greek that he thinks everything stems from Greek. Everything that happens, he goes, you know what? You, you really, you really should, you, everything stems from Greek. All the words you love, all the foods you love, all the things you love, they all stem from Greek. The Greek made the art. The Greek made the food. The Greek made the clothing. The Greek made the music. The Greek made science, right? And so he's so proud of his Greek heritage. And as a, as a movement practitioner and a brain-based neuro geek, I am super proud of the central nervous system. <laughs> okay. So central nervous system, everything stems from central nervous system, just like everything stems from Greek. All right. So your central nervous system is the control center for your brain, for your body, for your organs for you to live. If your central nervous system goes down, you cease to exist as a human being, all right? So everything stems from the central nervous system. And we wanna focus on, on improving the function of your brain and your spinal cord because everything stems from that central nervous system, all right? The central nervous system is the most efficient control system in the body. So if we wanna regain motor control and neurologic control over our body, we have to hit the CNS. It's also the fastest system, meaning that the, the changes that happen in the central nervous system happen faster, learning happens faster, retraining happens faster, healing happens faster in the central nervous system than anywhere else in your body. Thirdly, it's the most anatomically stable system in your body, which means if we change something or we improve something in the central nervous system, it becomes very stable. It becomes very consistent. It becomes something that we can consistently bank on and know is going to stay there. Meaning that when you learn a movement skill, when you learn how to do something, when you learn how to improve or reduce your neurologic symptoms, the brain remembers that, can utilize that, and then it can perform that through your activities of daily living. So the, the better that we train the central nervous system, the better, the, the more efficient our body becomes, it functions faster and it becomes more stable. Now, the last thing that the central nervous system does, why we focus on it, it is the most functionally plastic or functionally changeable. So right now, your body, if you've had MS or if you've had Parkinson's or if you've had Lyme disease for over pretty much six months or longer, your body will start adapting. Your body will start compensating. Your body will start working around the damage in your central nervous system in order that you can, or so that you can move, in order that you can survive, in order that you can complete the task of daily living, okay? So, so it changes really fast, honestly, in the wrong direction because it's trying to just protect you. My job and your job working in the MS gym and using movement as medicine 
is to uh, teach the brain and teach the central nervous system new neurologic habits, new movement skills, and access new neurologic pathways that already exist in your body, but we want to get the brain to start choosing alternative neurologic pathways instead of the pathway that's already damaged so we can work around that damaged neurologic tract and create new patterns and new way of doing things that create the movements and create the movement skills that we are seeking and that symptom reduction that we are seeking. All right. So we want to focus on the central nervous system. And that's everything that I do in every modality that I work on is from central nervous system out, from brain out, spinal cord out to your nerves, your muscles, and your joints. Okay. So going back to this slide, this is your global positioning system, right? So this is your movement positioning system. And so there's three main satellites in your brain that help you create motor patterns in your body to help you move, to help you balance, to help your strength, your endurance, your energy, your, your, uh, your bladder control, your eyesight, all that kind of stuff. All right. So when we look at these three uh, satellites, we're like, well, what are these three big satellites that control the entire body? Because I thought it was just about improve, improving movement. Well, in order to have quality movement, in order to have strong movement, to have strength endurance, to have stability endurance, to be able to go and complete the activities of your daily life with more energy, with more vitality, with more focus and more capability, more mobility, you've got to improve the function of each of those three satellites. And like I said at the beginning, most therapy and most fitness programs only focus on improving one satellite. So what are the three? Neurology 101, all right? Sorry, that slide up there, Neurolo G 101. <laughs> Neurology 101, all right? So this is how your brain works from a very basal, foundational, fundamental level, all right? So it asks the question, so when your brain, when something happens or when you want to move from point A to point B, from your couch to the kitchen or from your bed to the restroom or from your car into the grocery store, you're, it, it requires planning on your brain's part, all right? So the first thing that the brain does is ask, what do we want to do, all right? I want to go from my car into the grocery store so I can get food to fuel my brain, all right? So what we do is our eyes first look and we see how far we are from our car to the front or to the doors of the grocery store. From our visual system, we can judge how far it is, right? We can look around and see if there's any imminent threats. We can look and see what kind of, what kind of surface we're, we're working with here. Is it asphalt? Is it concrete? Is it a dirt road? Am I in the grass? Like what, what is going on, right? So we actually have sensory input from all around us. Our eyes tell us what's around us. Our ears tell us what's around us. We can smell if there's any danger. Our feet hopefully can feel the ground and we can feel ourselves inside of our body and we can touch and feel um, what's going on around us. We can feel wind on our skin. We can feel heat on our skin, all that kind of stuff. So your external senses, uh, th that gives you sensory input. You also have sensory input inside of your body, which is called interoception. So in order for you to get from your car to the grocery store door, you're gonna need to actually use energy. So your body's like, okay, cool. What, what organs do we need kicking in so that we can move from our car to the grocery store. So that's all sensory input. So your external senses that sense the external world and the sensors inside your body that sense what's going on inside your body, both of those need to be functioning well in order for you to be a highly functional human being, right? It's also, if we have neurodegenerative or neurodisruptive conditions, improving your external sensory input and your internal sensory input will reduce your symptoms. By improving sensory input, we will reduce spasticity. We will reduce bladder disruption. We will reduce uh, muscle fatigue. We will boost energy. We will boost strength and we will boost balance, okay? So once we get that sensory input coming in, it has to go in the brain. And once it's in the brain, there's multiple centers of the brain. And we'll talk about a couple through this presentation that have to integrate that information, all right? So it has to say, what do we want? What is happening? Then inside the brain, it's like we have to judge, is it safe, all right? And if it is safe, we will move forward. If it is not safe, we will stay where we're at. Or is it kind of safe, we'll move forward, but then your body will actually create protective responses so that you don't get hurt because your brain's number one job is survival, okay? 
So that's where MS symptoms come from and neurodisruptive symptoms come from and Parkinson's symptoms come from and Lyme disease symptoms come from. They're actually protective mechanisms in your brain to make it so that you don't die. Because again, your, jo- your brain's number one job is survival. So we, we get all this information. What do we want to do? What's happening? Is it safe? Can we move forward? And then from that green part, we follow those green arrows around, okay? And we go to motor output. This is where most fitness and most therapy programs hang out. And I, before I started studying this like super high level neurologic stuff, this was me. I, I'm, I'm a very high level, highly educated, corrective exercise specialist. And I got really good at figuring out how the body moves, where dysfunctions were, and then how to create exercises to improve joint mechanics, muscle contraction, neurologic conduction to the specific area of your symptoms. However, that was only a third of the story. So once I started learning about how your sensory input and your your brain's ability to integrate that sensory input uh, directly impact the quality of your motor output, it was like a big old aha, like, like aha moment, like the part, the clouds parted, sunshine was coming down. I had an eagle perched on my shoulder. (laughs) I was like, I know what to do now. Right. So uh, (laughs) let me get back on track. I digress. But we have to have quality sensory input, quality integration, and then that creates quality symptom-free motor output. If there's a disruption in the sensory input, the integration capacity, or the motor output inside your central nervous system, that will create your neurologic neurodisruptive symptoms, all right? So those are the things that we want to focus on improving. So another way to think about that, just in simplistic terms, the three part of your neurologic GPS or your movement GPS, global positioning system, is your visual system. Your brain says, can I see and understand what's going on? Your vestibular system, which lives inside your inner ear that says, can I balance which way we are going, which way are we going and which way is up? And then you look at your movement system, which includes two skills. and, And the brain needs to know, can I breathe well and can I move well? If you cannot breathe well, you will not move well. And if you're not moving well, there's a high likelihood you're not breathing well because you're compensating. Your body's afraid. Movement is threatening. And so therefore your your, uh, breathing becomes dysregulated and that can mess up a lot of different things in your central nervous system, your your energy systems, and it can create and exacerbate neurodisruptive conditions. Okay. Okay. So, oh, skip. Okay. So the first thing is, can you see? So we're going to talk about the visual system. So if you look over on the left side of this slide in that green area, that's called your midbrain. That is where the nerves that feed your eyeballs, your visual systems come from. The midbrain is highly responsible for core stability and balance and also for the muscles that flex, meaning that they, they bend. So leaning forward, pulling your neck forward, pulling your arms forward, bending your knees, lifting your legs. Those are all flexion activities. Okay. So when the visual system is involved in more than just eyeglass prescription, the visual system is involved in uh, visual clarity, visual depth, movement, and peripheral. Like, can you sense what's going on around you? Vision is a key symptom reducer. So the better your visual system can work, even if you don't have good eyesight, like visual acuity, You can work on your eyeballs because there's muscles in your eyes. And by improving the way that your your eye muscles work, that will improve the way that the rest of your body works. So your visual system is directly connected to your balance, your strength, your endurance, your focus, and your ability to relax. Okay. All right. Hold on. I got to adjust my chair here. I think weird things are going on. (laughs) I'm like slowly getting shorter. I'm like, ew. So when we work on visual drills or eye drills, that's some of the highest payoff drills that you can possibly do. And they only take between two and five minutes a day to start improving your balance, strength, endurance, focus, and relaxation. Okay. And we'll get to that in a sec, how we use those. The second main system that we want to train is your balance system. So can you balance? Okay. So the brain, the the, the vestibular system lives inside your ear. This organ down here on this bottom slide is one of the most beautiful, elegant organs in your entire body. It's fascinating how the uh, fluid inside those canals and the little tiny cilia, which is the the hair cells inside of there, 
actually work to create balance for you and to keep you standing upright. So the balance system is your brain's instrument panel. It kind of says which way are we going, which way is up and what's going on, right? Your vestibular system is, is uh, responsible for the ABCs, which is your accuracy, balance and coordination of your movements. And it also is directly involved in posture, walking, balance, strength and energy. So as you can see, you got the visual system, balance, strength, endurance, focus, and relaxation. You got the vestibular system, posture, walking, balance, strength, and energy. Those all feed in and those all counteract your neurodisruptive symptoms. Okay, so it's important to train both. And then the last thing is, can you move? And like I said on three slides earlier, can you breathe is intimately tied with, tied with can you move? Breathing, and you can see like all these red areas in this diagram are all involved with you breathing. So if you have problems swallowing, if you have problems speaking, if you have problems breathing, if you have MS hug, if you have hip flexor issues, if you have pelvic floor weakness, if you have bladder incontinence, if you have constipation or diarrhea, um, if you have trouble lifting your legs, if you have trouble walking, all of that, that's intimately tied to the what's called the intrinsic kinetic chain which is directly involved with your ability to breathe well. The better you breathe, the better your core stability is and the better your strength is. So if you look at this diagram on the right with this Vitruvian man here, you can see these color dots. So your body is connected as well. So these like your wrist is tied to your opposite ankle, your elbow is tied to your opposite, uh, or I'm sorry, your wrist is tied to your opposite ri ah, wrist is tied to your opposite ankle. Your elbow is tied to your opposite knee. Your shoulder is tied to your opposite hip. Your sacrum or lower back is tied to your jaw. Your neck is tied to your low back. And then your thoracic spine is directly tied to upper and lower in there. So your body has all these systems that are interconnected. So when we breathe right and when we move right and when we connect that sensory integration so that your body knows how to take information in, how to integrate it and process it in your brain, then how to create a proper motor plan because it is safe and not threatening. That's when we start to reduce symptoms. That's when we start to access new neurologic pathways. That is how we counteract neurologic disruption. All right. So your brain is fueled by movement and breathing. Your balance is improved by movement and breathing. Your brain is connected all the time. Your body's connected all the time. Your movement's connected all the time. So the lower that we can make, the, the, if we can reduce the threat of movement, that is going to reduce the brain's uh, necessity to create protective mechanisms, which is going to decrease your symptoms. So again, spasticity is protective. Bladder incontinence is protective. Muscle weakness and fatigue is protective. If your body doesn't feel good and feels like it's really a threat to your survival, when you're up on your feet, it is going to prefer to sit in a chair or lie on a bed. So the first thing that we do, what we want to, or in addition to eyesight and vestibular, I'm sorry, visual and vestibular, we also want to improve breath control and breath capability and movement fluency so that we can have less symptoms. And with breath control, it takes about 10 to 20 breaths of really concentrating on your breathing a day to have astronomical improvements in your spasticity and also in your balance, your strength and your energy. So how do we do this? Okay, so let's talk about foot drop. All right. A lot of people have foot drop. Not everybody, but a lot of people have foot drop. You have ankle instability. You have, you have lower leg instability. And so we can actually use the sensory integration in your brain combined with corrective exercise and movement drills to enhance the results of your movement training. So if we combine visual exercises with ankle mobility exercises, what it does is it activates the flexors of the body and that, that red muscle right here, this anterior tibialis, that's the muscle that you need to lift your foot. And then you got these green muscles over here and these blue muscles over here. Blue muscles are your peroneals. Green muscles is your posterior tibialis. Those provide lateral and medial support for your ankle. If you can activate your peroneals, your post tib and your anterior tibialis, that is the combination needed to override foot drop or override spasticity or override weakness in your foot and, and allow you to lift it and also you tell you to step on it so that you can walk better. 
So when we work on visual, the visual field, when we do vision drills, that activates the flexion centers of our brain, which activate the flexors in the ankle. So that is going to turn on the ankle joint. All right. So let's talk about what those exercises look like. The first exercise that we want to look at is what's called a smooth pursuit. OK, so what you're going to do here is you're going to grab a pen and that pen. I want you to have a I want you to have a letter on it and you're going to look at that letter. OK, so you're going to stay and you're going to look at that letter. You're going to turn your hat back because it's time for victory. And then all you're going to do is focus on that letter and you are going to move that pen to the right and then back to center. And to the right, and then back to center, right? And to the right, and then back to center. And as you do this, I want you to move slow, and I want you to avoid holding your breath. So you're going to do like three to five repetitions to the right, breathing in as you go out, breathing out as you come back to center, and then you're going to do that to the left, okay? So as I go to my left, I'm going to breathe in there, as I come back to center in front of my nose, I'm going to breathe out. And boom. By coordinating your breath with your eyes, that is going to greatly enhance the ability of your brain to find your flexors, turn them on, and improve your ankle mobility. Okay? Now, what? right after we do visual, then we go and we do ankle drills. Okay? So here's an awesome drill. What we're going to do here is we're going to sit in a chair put our heel on top of a piece of tape, or this is a like a strap, your heel is gonna stay there and all you're gonna do is you're gonna move your foot to the right and to the left over the top of that tape, which gives your brain an external obstacle to lift your foot over. Now this only requires that you lift your foot about a millimeter. All you gotta do is clear the floor. And when you do that, you're gonna lift your foot up and you're gonna internally rotate your foot or invert, you're gonna lift up and you're gonna turn it to the outside. Now this can be done seated or it can be done standing. So you're seeing I'm doing it both ways. Now in this standing position, my chest is up, my shoulder blades are back, my abs are in, my glutes are definitely activated. I'm in a nice tall position and I am using a balance implement. Um, I'm using a balance implement as I go. Now, as you do this, I want you to breathe out as you lift your foot because that's gonna help your brain kind of connect into and relax through this movement. So you can see I'm lifting it, going to the outside, lifting it, going to the inside, breathing out as I lift my foot, breathing in as I put it down. So nice gentle breaths back and forth is going to help you improve your ankle mobility. And when you do that combined with your visual system, that's going to enhance your results and it's also going to get your results faster. Okay. Now let's go back to this. So the next thing that I want to talk about is hip flexors. I can't lift my legs, all right? How many of you cannot lift your legs? Like, I, I see you raising your hand. I can feel you raising your hand. So hip flexor strengthening, there's a lot of hip flexor drills you do out there. But if you look at this red, so, so look on the side here, um, there's gonna be these red muscles on the side of your spine. That's your psoas muscle. Those muscles are tied to the, the, the same ligament and tendinous attachment for your diaphragm. So if we improve our breathing mechanics and reduce MS hug or diaphragmatic disruption, we will improve the strength and activation of the psoas, which is going to stabilize your spine, improve your core stability, and improve your hip flexor strength so you can lift your legs. That is going to counteract uh, gait patterns like scissor gait, circumduction gait, which we call peg leg, knee kiss, which is knee valgus, um, knee hyperextension, and all of that. So once you activate your breathing centers, that indirectly activates your hip flexors so that when we coordinate that with our walking, we're going to get better lifting of our legs, which is going to prevent a lot of neurodisruptive symptoms. So the exercises we're going to do, we're going to do a, three, a 360 degree breath first, then we're going to do a hip flexor lift or a thigh lift. All right. So let's take a look at those. So here we go. This is 360 breathing. So you're going to see videos of this. I'm going to, this is seated. I'm also going to show this to you. Um, I'm going to show this to you on the floor as well. Okay. So what you're going to do first is you're going to take your hands and you're going to put them on your ribs. You're going to push in on your rib cage 
Because when you breathe out, it tells your brain like, oh, I'm breathing against something. Here's where I'm breathing from. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you better activate your deep core stabilizers to push out into those hands. All right. So what this looks like is we're going to breathe out in through our belly and we're going to try to expand that canister into our hands. And then when we breathe out, you're going to see my hands come back together. Now, if you look at what I'm doing on the right side, I'm doing this lying down. OK, when you lie down, if it's possible for you to lie down and put your feet up on something, what that does is it deactivates the psoas a little bit. It lets it lets them focus on uh, kind of that that tenderness stability rather than stabilizing your spine because you're not fighting against gravity as you do when you're seated. So if you can do some breath work on your back in what's called a supine position, still working on breathing into your hands and breathing and then pushing out and, and getting all that air out of your lungs, that's going to improve your psoas function, your diaphragm function, your core stability, your spinal pain, all that kind of stuff. All right. So there, either way you're doing it. Now, as we do this, uh, I'm going to have you breathe in from anywhere for three to five seconds. So we breathe in. Okay. And then we breathe out by exhaling for about anywhere between six and eight seconds. So we do a four to six second inhale, and then we do a six to eight second uh, exhale, trying to empty our lungs and squeeze all the air out of our lungs. When we squeeze all the air out of our lungs, it stimulates and activates your pelvic floor, your obliques, your abdominals, your spine, and your diaphragm. Right, breathing like this and practicing breathing like this also stimulates your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve down regulates your sympathetic nervous system, which means that it down regulates or reduces your protective symptoms and helps you move better. This is an essential part of any movement practice and especially with neurodisruptive conditions. That intrinsic kinetic chain, which is involved in breath control and core stability, is one of the very first things to get disrupted. Okay. All right, so after we do our breathing, then we go and we hit the hip flexors, all right? So I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see in this video, I got a seated exercise and I got a supine exercise. If you're able to do them on the floor, I would recommend doing hip flexors on the floor. It's a little bit easier for the brain. If you can't get on the floor, the hip flexor drill in the chair is perfect. If you notice in this drill, I am seat, I am leaning back. So I. I sit on the front of my chair and I lean back against the back of that chair. And this allows for more length in my hip flexors and allows me to lift my legs a little bit more effectively. Okay. Now, when we do this with breathing, I'm just going to show you this real quick. As we lift our legs, I want you to breathe out. Okay. And as we put our legs down, I want you to breathe in. So this is what it looks like. So I lean back, I sit up nice and tall, no slouching. I'm going to take a breath in to get set. And then as I lift my leg, I'm going to blow my air out, pull my abs in, and lift my leg. Okay? Same thing on the floor down here. As I pull my thigh, I keep my knee bent. As I pull my thigh back towards my chest, I'm going to breathe out as well. That will activate your diaphragm, your hip flexors, and will make this exercise a bit easier, a bit more effective. Okay, so I breathe in as my leg comes down. I breathe out as my leg comes up, keeping that knee bent. I breathe in as my leg goes down. I breathe out as my leg goes up. Now, if you cannot lift your leg on your own, I recommend using an elastic strap. What you're going to do is you're going to take that elastic strap and you'll see me do it. I'm going to put it around my leg. And I'm going to lean back. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on that band and I'm going to hold it in that position. I'm going to push my leg down either to the floor or to that elevated position. And I'm going to hold my hands like this, not allowing my hands to move. Then I'm going to, I'm going to allow the elasticity of that resistance band to pull my leg up. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Boom. We'll go back a little bit. So my, I'm right here. So I push down into that rubber band, I pause, and then as my leg comes up, that band helps me, okay? So let's, so let's watch that again, we come back. So I put that band around, okay? So as I put the leg down, I'm breathing out. 
as I'm pulling my leg back, I'm breathing in. This is vagus nerve stimulation. So it, it reduces the threat of this exercise. And that elastic band provides a spot or an assistance to help me get my leg up. So we use the elastic properties of that, that resistance band to lift our leg, okay? So we do breathing first, then we do hip flexion. We do eye drills first, then we do ankle drills, okay? That's not a tried and true, but these are, these are methods that we use inside the MS Gym to improve the effectiveness of exercises rather than just straining and grinding through corrective exercise or therapeutic exercise. We activate the entire nervous system to help us and to put more players on the field to make these exercises more doable, okay? All right, so let's go to our third, uh, third X or third category here. So let's talk about poor balance, okay? Poor balance. So with poor balance, um, that comes from a, 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 di a dysregulation in your cerebellum. Remember I said the cerebellum is in your, and that's connected to your vestibular system. Vestibular system is ABCs, accuracy, balance, and coordination. So if you have tremors when you try to move, if you have tremors when you try to relax, if you have tremors when you start to try to initiate a movement, that's a cerebellar issue. It's also a joint receptor issue. It's also a, a, a spinal cord issue. It's also a peripheral nerve issue. So tremors, balance issues, coordination issues, depth perception issues, all that kind of stuff. When you go to reach for something and you kind of miss it, this is all cerebellum. So if we can stimulate the vestibular system, that stimulates the spinal cord, that stimulates the peripheral nerves, that goes into your joint receptors inside your ankles or your shoulders or your pelvis or your head, and that is going to improve global balance throughout your entire body. So when we do vestibular work and then we follow it with hip strength, that is going to improve gluteal function, and gluteal function is necessary for you to stand upright and to propel you forward when you walk. So when we activate the vestibular system, we turn on the spinal cord, we turn on the hip muscles by way of the peripheral nerves through the lumbosacral plexus, which is this top slide, that activates our big old glute max, and we have a glutey party, along with our hip stabilizers, okay? And that, that actually uh, stimulates better extension in the body, which is our ability to stand upright and balance and not fall forward which is where most falls happen is forward when we're rotating or forward when we're bending this way. Most people fall when they're flexed and they're rotated. They don't fall as much going backwards. It does happen. And these drills will help that, but really we're going to work on, we're going to work on improving extension throughout our entire body so we can stand upright and our brain feels better. And like, it's not going to fall down. So the exercises that we're going to do right now are called board rocks. And then we're going to follow those with a, with a glute builder, right? Work that booty. And then a, an intrinsic hate hip stabilization drill. Those are combined because you want those hips stable um, underneath the roundness of everybody's booty. All right. Which is what we want. So this is what we do. So the very first drill that we're doing here is what's called a board rock. Now you can do this seated or you can do this standing. The goal is to keep your spine as straight as you can. The goal is to reach towards the floor and pull your shoulder blades down. And the goal here is to use your, your deep core muscles, right? So these muscles right here on your side to prevent momentum from carrying you to one side. So the goal here is not force production. The goal here is force negation or force prevention. You want to prevent and control the momentum of your body swaying side to side. So our goal here is to keep the core tight and stop momentum. So the first one that we're doing here is a side to side board rock. This is gonna work on the lateral stabilizers of your vestibular system. There's different areas and different organs inside of your vestibular system. Those are gonna be stimulated and this is gonna help train your body not to fall side to side when you're walking, okay? Now, the second exercise that we got going on here is front to back, all right? So front to back, you're going very, very small motions. So you can see I'm not doing big old movements back and forth. We're doing short, tiny, controlled movements. So if we go back side to side, you're doing very small movements, very small movements, very small movements, very small movements. Then front to back, very small movement, very small movement, very small movement, 
very small movement. So these are straight as a board, rocking side to side, controlling that momentum. The better that your brain gets and your vestibular system gets at preventing momentum and stopping unwanted forces, the better that your balance gets. So these are insanely in effect, <laughs> insanely effective and simple drills that you can do anywhere. Like half the time I'll be sitting here working on the computer, doing stuff for the MS gym and I'm, I'm board rocking. Or when I'm standing in line at the grocery store, I'm board rocking, just side to side, very small, just working on my vestibular system. I do this while I brush my teeth. If I had any hair, I would do it while I brushed my hair, right? So when you're doing things or doing dishes or cooking or watching TV, stand up or sit up at the edge of your chair and work on moving side to side like this, you are getting vestibular stimulus. You are reducing your symptoms. You are upregulating your parasympathetics, and this is going to help you uh, balance better really from the top of your head all the way down through your ankle and feet joints. Okay. All right. So once we get that vestibular system fired up, then what we do, we're going to work on our hips. Okay. So with our hips, we're going to really, really want to work on moving from our upper thigh. Now we're going to use a band in two different exercises. One of them is kind of like you're holding tight around your legs and one of them, if you're able to, you can stand up and you can walk with a band around your legs. The goal here is to get the muscles inside of your hip joints to fire. So you want to be moving from your thigh. So as you can see here, I crossed, let me show you again. I crossed that band underneath me. I make it into an X, so crisscross applesauce, and I hold it there. I lock my shoulder blades down. I sit up nice and tall, and then I'm using the muscles inside my hip joints to move and push out on that band, thereby strengthening my external rotators of my hip and also my hip abductors, like your glute medius and glute minimus, which are your stabilizers in your hip that prevent you from falling side to side and propel you moving forward. Now, when you look at this drill, you see me doing it seated in and out, okay? Working inside, outside in a seated position. And then also with that slide on the right, you're seeing me work in a standing position. Now you can do this with trekking poles. You can do this if I turn around and put my hands on the wall, you can do it against the wall to maintain your balance. If you were able to maintain a very upright position, blades down, abs in, and don't have a lot of balance challenges, I would recommend doing the standing one. If you have any sort of balance challenges that you're compensating or you find yourself tipping very a lot side to side instead of holding your core solid like you see me doing here, like I have a little bit of forward movement, but basically my upper body is not moving. I'm just moving those hips. So if you cannot do that, I would highly recommend starting to do these drills seated and then progressively move into doing things on your feet, but have a balance implement or an assistive device with you. As you get better with that assistive device, then you can use it less and then that's gonna help you balance, okay? So you can see here, I'm pushing out to the outside. I'm stepping to the outside. I'm doing my thing. I'm moving from the upper thigh. Okay. All right, y'all. Good, good, good. All right. So let's go back. So as you can see, we hit all those. Okay. We hit all those. So we have foot drop. So we have visual system combined with lower body function. We have breathing systems combined with hip flexor control or deep core stability, upper leg control. And then we have vestibular training combined with hip strength. These are the areas inside your brain that when they're activated, they combine, they play together, and they rock out, all right? And then you got the exercises to follow. So the three big takeaways that I want you guys to take away from today is number one, in order to reduce neurodisruptive conditions, neurodisruptive symptoms, you have got to train the entire central nervous system. Secondly, your central nervous system is the thing that reduces symptoms not your peripheral nervous system. If you have, if your hands are stuck like this and you just try to do wrist drills, they may not be effective. But when you actually start to do visual training with your hands, because they're connected in your brain, all of a sudden those wrist drills become a lot more effective. Your ankle drills become a lot more effective because they're tied together. Eyes, wrist, ankles, all tied together, right? Vestibular, neck, spine, hips, all tied together. Hip flexors, deep core, breath control, Glutes, spine, tied together. So what does this mean? This means that movement is medicine. So movement is medicine. Movement 
dis or deregulates or, or turns down that sympathetic fight or flight threat response in your brain. Movement up regulates or turn the volume up on your parasympathetic rest, recover, and feel safe areas of your brain. And that is going to allow you to counteract your neurodisruptive symptoms and allow you to move in a better way with more mobility and more freedom through your activities of daily living. Okay. All right. Real quick. Somebody just put down here real, real, uh, real quick. I have a balance problem, but I think some of it is because both my feet are numb from neuropathy. All right. So this was from Diane. Okay. She said right there, I have a balance problem, but I think some of some of it is because both my feet are numb from neuropathy. Now, inside the MSGM, we actually do have things that directly target sensory improvement in your hands, your feet, your face, your spine, your hips. But I have to say, doing visual work, doing vestibular work, and doing breath work will help you improve sensory symptoms like tremors, like clonus, like neuropathy, and like sensory, uh, sensory deprivation type stuff or a low ability to feel your feet, find your feet, and use your feet. Okay, so thank you, Diane. All right, y'all, so my time's about up. So here's the thing, if you want more exercises like this, if you want these exact same exercises, they're inside the MS Gym. And I what I want you to do is over the next couple of days, I want you to check your inbox for a very special offer that we're giving to you guys and offering to you guys. There was like 350 people on this uh, on this live so that you can get in there and get your special offer. We have a program out that we're launching that we've just put out that is going to give you exercises like this, combine exercises like this. You don't have to think about how to combine these things. I've already done it for you. All you have to do is basically go in, log in, go to your thing and click play and boom, these exercises are done for you in a very smooth, well-coached, very efficient, very short blocks of time uh session so that you can start to improve your movement. You can start to improve your mobility. You can start to reduce your symptoms. You can start to boost your energy and you can start to feel better. If you want to check us out any further, you can go to the msgym.com. And I really, 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 really hope that I get to see you on the inside and I get a chance to work with you. So thank y'all for being here. I thank you for this awesome audience. You guys are fantastic. I give you one of these. I love you. I thank you. And uh, I will see you on our next webinar. Take care. Bye.